Today we're going to be looking at high school phenom Bo Bassett and his partial one system, mainly the partial one to the five miscarry slash dunk. Remember that the partial one is whenever the top wrestler gives up an escape in a way that when they get back neutral, they still have the advantageous or at least desired position. So the way he gives it up, the opponent is going to underhook him or they're going to grab his tricep elbow area, either one, um, and then he's going to end up going to an inside dunk. So I call it an inside dunk. That's how DeSanto refers to it. Especially does the same technique. He calls it a lazy fireman's carry. It's the over-the-head finish. So that's going to be the first thing that we look at. So partial one, every clip is going to be from the partial one. And as you can see, he goes right into the fireman's carry. As soon as the person reaches back up, and he's just going to go right over his head, and the person is going to go to their back. Very simple. I'm going to show every clip I've seen of him doing this. I'm going to show just so the repetitiveness of it is really instills it in your brain. So I wanted to show something specific on this one. If you're good at the fireman's carry, get very comfortable with this Navy rod position. I see so many younger guys, the older generation did this a lot. So many younger guys, as soon as they get to the Navy rod position, they just let it go. Um, but you're gonna be giving up back points if you do that, especially if you do this move often. This is, again, the dude is going to um, reach up this time. He decides to get an underhook. It's two things I wanted to show in this clip. So, upon that gets on the hook, they're either going to get a shallow underhook or grab your elbow, try something back. And Bo is going to, he's trying to hip down to get his head free. So, his head is trapped. When this happens, it's going to happen a lot. You need to hip down towards their head. And this is going to allow your head to your head to get out on the other side and clear so it can get up and you're able to hold them on their back. This is a clip of two-time national champion Nick Lee using this technique. So it's a partial one. He's gonna grab the tricep. The opponent is gonna grab his tricep back. Then he's gonna hit, hit his fireman's carry. His head is trapped. He's going to hip down towards the opponent's head to get his head free. That way he's able to get his chest on top of his opponent's chest and get some back points. This is a clip from Instagram. That's why some of these clips are gonna have like the lettering on the side. They're very basic. Just went over his head, hips down, get that head clear. Pretty, pretty basic stuff. Let me talk a little bit louder. Pretty basic stuff. Optional, um, optional position, optional start. So he's gonna try the fireman's, um, he's gonna fail it. I always like to include the fail attempts to show you that it's not a dangerous move to fail. It's not a dangerous move to fail. It's, you get all the benefits, when you're good at a fireman's carry, you get all the benefits of being a thrower without almost any of the risk. So here you notice that he hips, he likes to hip down while the person is falling so he doesn't get stuck in that position. It's not necessarily necessary. A lot of times Austin DeSanto and Spencer Lee, when they do it, they don't have to hip down at all, but it can happen. That one, he ran his feet. Sometimes when you get stuck like that, you may feel the need to run your feet. Just be prepared for that. Everybody won't just slip off. A few more examples of this. They're all the same. It's just, I really want you guys to understand this works. This works. He's going to, again, change direction around his feet. Hips down, get his head clear. It works so well. Austin Santo had great success with this. Our opponent's going to have a shallow underhook. Austin Santo had great success. Oh, he never won nationals. Okay. Nick Lee, two time national champion. Now I'm showing you a high school kid doing it who's going to college tournaments and winning college tournaments with this technique. So just want to let you guys know, this is something that you need to pay attention to. It works. The next thing we want to look at is a different variation of the inside carry, inside dump, really interchangeable name that Nick Lee likes to use. Now I haven't seen too many other people use this type of finish. So yesterday I posted a video about it, but I will show a clip right after this. So you guys know what I'm talking about. But the way Nick Lee does it, two-time national champion for Penn State, now he runs his feet 
to the outside as if he's running in a circular motion to get to the outside of the person's body. So that's what we're going to be looking at next. So Nick Lee, this is also from an optional, optional start. But he's going to run his feet. That's why I decided to show the clip. Pay attention to how he runs his feet. I posted an entire video about it yesterday, but I just wanted to show you guys what I mean by Nick Lee finish before I get into the rest of the clips. So Bo Bassett, optional start. Opponent is going to grab his tricep back. This is going to happen most of the time. He's going to hit the move, run his feet, circular motion, right around to the outside. This was the perfect clip of it. I mean, this was perfect execution of the Nick Lee finish that I call it. He would get back points. Again, optional start. Opponent grabs his tricep back. They run his feet to the outside. Really basic. Gets his head out, clears the head, able to get back points. Once again, run his feet to the outside. He's not going over the head. He's not going across the shoulders, which I'm going to show next. I'm going to show the across the shoulders next. A few more examples of it. I watch all the matches of, whenever I do like a personal study on somebody, I watch all the matches of that kid uh, or that of that wrestler, because most of the time it's collegiate wrestlers. Um, so I just like to include every clip in here. I don't know how many it will take for it to click for some people. Some people, if I'm constantly making a video about something, using different wrestlers, uh, adding different details, it is a technique that I, I really, really, really believe in. So this is actually a really cool example. Let me start over because I was yapping. Cool example. He's going to start off trying to run his feet with the Nick Lee finish. When it doesn't work, he's going to switch to the over the head finish. Let me play it one more time. So starts running his feet, circular outside like Nick Lee does. When it doesn't work, he's able to transition. So don't get so tunnel vision to where you're only focusing on one type of finish. He's so effective because he knows multiple. I watch every single Austin Asanto video I can on the internet. I've never seen Austin Asanto finish a fireman's carry like that. So the fact that he's able to do both is going to take him a long way. Now we're going to be looking at the across the shoulders when they finish across the shoulders. This is considered a typical carry when you have them and then you collapse to one hip or go over one shoulder and they go across your shoulder besides going over the head like the Santo and Spencer Lee does. So this is the same thing as the other examples. This is just a more old school fireman's carry when he's going across the shoulder. I don't like this one as much, obviously because the two guys I see who do the fireman's carry the most, Spencer Lee and Austin Santo, who had the most success with it, they typically don't go across the, across the shoulders like that. When it comes to cartwheels and in college, you have more athletic guys. Obviously it does work. Sometimes they're going to react in a way to where you have to make a split sec a split second decision and going over the head or the Nick Lee finish may not be the best finish. So obviously you should know how to do this. It's just not the um the the finish that I favor the most, but it's still a great finish. Obviously, this is the actual fireman's carry part of the fireman's carry. So very basic, same partial one, same thing, letting them up, hand on the tricep, right underneath the armpit. I mean, to me, this is the second best move in wrestling, obviously after the double leg, but I love this move a lot. It's it's a it's like a throw, the benefits of a throw, going feet to back, but it's very low risk. You're not expose, uh, exposing your own back. It works at the highest level, especially if you're a lightweight. Now, this family of moves works at every weight class. I've explained this already. 197, Colin Moore, Mason Paris, 285, beat Amir Zare who ended up being a senior world champion. He's He pinned him in the junior world championships with his move. He obviously hit his move plenty of times in college. So it works at every single weight class. Um, but if the guys I'm focusing on, right, who have I brought up in this video? The video is about Bo Bassett, who these clips are from his time at 132 and 138. Nick Lee, 141. Austin Santo, 133. Spencer Lee, 125. If you are a lightweight, you have zero excuse not to put in time and learning this move. And that's a personal opinion, but I try my best to back it up with facts, with footage, with data.
He can also do a pretty good outside carry as well. Now, he doesn't do it as often as he does the inside carry. But keep in mind, he's only a high school, I mean, only a sophomore of high school. So the thing that made DeSanto so dangerous is because he could do it to both legs. So I'm sure Bo Bassett, if he's being very methodical about the way he's developing his technique, I have a feeling that he's going to be developing his outside carry over these next few years. Optional start, partial one. Going to go to the far left this time, which he doesn't do as often, like I already said. But he's going to develop this. I have a feeling. Hopefully, he sees this video. If he does, or someone close to him sees this video, please keep developing this in the practice room. This kid obviously works hard. If he can do this to the near leg and the far leg, he's going to be scary. So the next few clips I'm going to show is a combination of a few of these because I'm going to show some matches where he's doing it back to back. So I don't want to break it up so I can show you the fact that he's constantly on the offense. But just to go over all of them right now, he can do a fake go behind. Now, Bo Bassett is not a very fast wrestler, not very quick. So why do people react to his fake so hard? They react so hard because he's very good at a feet-to-back move. When somebody is good at a feet-to-back move, they can put five points on the board very quickly. We're talking about high school scoring here. You have to respect their fakes, right? It's a lot more dangerous than somebody just trying to get a two-point takedown. He can also barrel roll. So a barrel roll is when you do a dunk motion without the leg or you have the leg, but you're still facing your opponent and you just collapse to your, you collapse to your hips a different type of way. Colin Moore did it off the, he even did it off of the hard one, I mean, off of the partial one, which I'm going to show. So Eric Schultz is making his way up. As you can see, Colin Moore is going to grab his tricep as soon as he turns into him and then go right into the barrel roll. Right there, that's a barrel roll. Didn't grab the leg. Sometimes he does grab the leg and have more of a shallow grip, but he's still facing the opponent. It's just different than a typical fireman's carry or dunk. Easy is not go behind. So sometimes when the opponent notices that when they unhook or grab the elbow tricep, that they're just gonna avoid grabbing anything or they watch film on you, or if it's already happened, if you've already done it to them one time in that match. So a lot of times this can eat, set up an easy snap go behind, especially if they reach up, but they're still on the knee, which happens a lot against guys like DeSanto and Bo Bassett because their pace is just so blistering. And they just keep going, keep going, or they avoid grabbing your tricep or elbow, and they end up setting themselves up for an elbow pass leg attack, which is something that DeSanto really did a lot because a lot of guys end up avoiding grabbing his tricep back. Here, the guy doesn't want to reach back up. Um, he stands back up, doesn't establish a firm hold, so it just makes the snap go behind very easy, easy two-point takedown. That will happen when you have this pace and when you're good at the partial one. So this clip, he's going to do an uh, outside carry right into a partial one. I mean, the, the kid wastes no time. The opponent is going to get a shallow underhook. And then he's going to hit a barrel roll without the leg. He's able to do that. He has that in his bag as well. Seeing a lot of Spencer Lee, Austin Santo matches, all of them on the internet, they don't do this, despite being very good at the fireman's carry. So while I consider all these moves in the same family, a lot of guys aren't able to do multiple of them in multiple different ways. So right here, barrel roll, because he's facing them. The reason I say that, let me pause it. So you guys get it. He's facing them. He's not he's not facing this way and the guy's facing this way, right? He's kind of still facing them. This typically is the way Colin Moore does it. So he's good at all the different types of whatever you want to call it. Barrel roll, dunk, fireman's carry. He's good at all of it. So he's going to hit that. Try to get some back points. Partial one, let him straight up. He's going to go over the head. Right into the head and arm finish. He eventually ends up getting the pin. I mean, imagine, I mean, constantly being threatened with taking, being taken feet to back. Optional start, partial one, right into the elbow pass, leg attack, when the opponent let go of the um, tricep grip, straight into the partial one with the Nick Lee finish, straight to his back. So, I mean, I'm going to keep showing a few more clips. Obviously, the video, a few more minutes long. This match, this whole match was just torturous, right? So, partial one, right into the barrel roll, barrel roll, without the leg, going to get five bat points right here. Going to get five points, two take down, three bat points. Let him straight up. 
as soon as he gets his back points. A point of grabs the tricep again. Now he's going to fake. Why does this fake work so well? The fake works so well. Bo Bassett isn't even fast. Why does it work so well? Because he's a threat to be taken, to take you feet to back. You have to respect the fake. He just took you, the last time he shot, he got five points. So now you're going to be thinking, you're, re you're overreacting. You're overreacting to it because you have to because he puts you in that type of mindset. The opponent gets a shot on the hook this time, over the head. He's trying to hip down and let his head get his head free. Ends up being patient and then getting it free. I mean, the, the kid the kid is good, but ev everyone can do this, right? Everyone not going to have the same pace, but with this, if you get this gut to fireman, you don't necessarily have to have a crazy pace because you're going to be able to score points in bunches, right? Kind of like Spencer, what does Spencer Lee do? Pops from the start, by the way. What does Spencer Lee do? Spencer Lee used to, his freshman year when he had bad cardio, let me let this finish, so he ends up doing over the head. He's hipping now, can't get his head free, ends up just leaving his head trapped. I do this a lot when I do the fireman's carry. Sometimes I just leave, or the, or the barrel roll, I just leave my head there because um, they're still trapped. But what did Spencer Lee used to do? Spencer Lee used to get a tilt for four points. He used to get a take now. Back when it was two points, obviously, his freshman year. But it's the first year for three point take downs. You get a full point turn and rob that six point lead for the rest of the match because his cardio was bad because he was constantly hurt. This match here is not really a particular type of carry or dump, it's just because it was kind of sloppy um, because of the, of the other guy's reaction. But it's just the fact that he did it back to back to back. I mean, he's looking like he's looking like prime Austin DeSanto here, honestly. I mean, Austin DeSanto is the only other wrestler I've ever seen do a dump to your back, a carry to your back, get five points, six points, whatever, instantly let you, let you back up, right back to it. Let you back up again. He's going to let him up again and then go right back to it. So that's what I mean when I say the Santo 2.0. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to him. Obviously, he's Bo Bassett. He's, he's his own person. If you watch the channel, you know how much I love Austin Santo. So I mean that as a compliment in the best way. One more clip of him doing it. So this one right here, I don't think it's a fireman's carry. I think this is just the easy snap goal. Wait, let me see. Yeah, it's a carry. Oh, it's a roll through finish. Okay. So this is going to happen a lot of times. You may get caught in that position. The person tries to throw you over. He just ends up rolling through with it. Still gets his point. Still gets um, get his take now. So just keep composure when it comes to that. It, it won't be a super common finish for you, but that will happen quite a bit if you do this move as much as he does. Something I wanted to mention is his he's best friends and practice partners with Mason Gibson. So um, I saw Mason Gibson wrestle Aiden Valencia at the Super 32 tournament. Aiden Valencia is really good, has a win at the senior senior nationals or some senior level tournament U.S. Open against Seth Gross. Also, before this match happened, he um he wrestled a all American from Michigan State. I'm forget I'm I'm forgetting his name right now at a college tournament and he walked him bad. He walked him badly. So Aiden Valencia, really good high school kid from California. So Mason Gibson is gonna hit kind of a partial one, right? He's gonna have a, a front headlock position. He's on top, then he gets the front headlock position. You can see he ends up getting tricep control. Aiden Valencia grabs the tricep back, inside dump right over the head straight into the pen. So I'm not sure this is something that the entire room practices, but I really hope him and Mason Gibson keep developing this technique, keep, develop, keep developing this move. It's one of the things that will take them very, very, very far in their collegiate careers. So thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Um, I also have some courses online available as well. I want you guys to check those out. Um, see if you like those. It's just a good way to support the channel. I have three available right now on earnyourgoldmetal.teachable.com. Um, I really appreciate it if you guys have a look at that. It's a good way to support the channel. And I'll see you on the next video.